There's a famous saying in science that nothing about biology makes sense except in light of evolution. Well, with my experiences with pain, and this picture is of me from actually about 10 to 12 years ago, when I was in the midst of many, many, many years of chronic pain, nothing made sense to me. Stretching, strengthening, I was already strong, I was already stretching, I tied all, I tried all of that, and nothing was working because I wasn't seeing that bodily pain, and there was no injury, just pain. I wasn't seeing it in the context that postural restoration provides, which is that musculoskeletal pain and joint pain and neck and body tension has to be seen in the light of walking and breathing, our original two movements. If you can't see it in that context, then the pain is very mysterious. But once you can understand walking and breathing are our two adult human movements that we don't have to learn how to do, it's just built into us and they can't be separated. Once you can put it in that context, your back pain can really be quite well understood. The most obvious demonstration of our asymmetric build is in the diaphragms. With my last video, a lot of people were surprised to find out or to learn for the first time that our right diaphragm, that we have two diaphragms, it's not just one. This is our primary breathing muscle, plural, muscles. The right side and the left side, they are two separate muscles and the right side is much bigger. And because of the bigger right diaphragm, and, that they, and the diaphragms attach underneath the front of the rib cage and then in the lumbar spine, as you see in this diagram, because of that, the forces generated upon the spine in a rotational and side bending movement are stronger to the right than they are to the left. So you could think of it this way. If I told you that you had 10% more core musculature on the right side than the left side, would that make you rethink your workouts and how you move? It probably would, it's just never considered. As I'm standing there in a neutral spine, what I'll call a neutral spine, and this, this uh, diagram is from one of the postural restoration manuals, you'll see that the diaphragm is in a domed shape. It's in, the dome shape allows it to go down and up, it allows it to pump as the primary breathing muscle. That's called a neutral spine. Most people, the gentleman that you're gonna see is not in that position. He's in this PEC pattern, pelvis forward, ribs up, he's lost his diaphragms and that's why his ranges of motion are limited. But once he can get that diaphragm into this dome position, but let me just show you what it would look like in a non-neutral position. So this is the extended spine. Now, I'm, now if you look at how I'm standing, I'm arching my back and bringing my head forward because that's kind of what happens. In this position, when the ribs are flared up, the diaphragm is flattened. It no longer has its dome. And if, it can't, if it's flattened, it can't move down and up. So you can't really use your diaphragms on one or both sides. Usually because of this asymmetry, the left side is, uh, becomes less of a breathing muscle and more of a postural muscle, the, while the right side will retain its ability to stay domed and pump also because it has that big liver underneath to support it. But in the PEC pattern, when both ribs, when you're bilateral, the right diaphragm also loses its, its ability to pump to one degree or another. So what I'm gonna show you now is a video of a client who actually just came in yesterday. And he was a perfect person to fit this video. I, I actually had this video planned before he came in, but nonetheless, I'm gonna just walk you through uh, what you're gonna see first and it's very sped up because it, it it's very sped up because otherwise it would be six minutes long And I know no one wants to sit and watch that first You're gonna see the testing where neither leg will adduct and then you'll see that neither leg will internally rotate I'm sorry neither shoulder will internally rotate He's in this PEC pattern that I was talking about then you're gonna see me have him blow up a balloon in a particular position and you will see how all of these range of motion tests change with no stretching nothing aside from getting him to breathe in the proper position, which allowed him to regain diaphragmatic uh, ability. So here you go. So here's his right leg. It does not adduct. So we know that his right leg, his right hip flexors are overactive, keeping the pelvis forward on that right side. But his left side obviously is going to be forward also because that's normal asymmetry. So the left side also does not adduct and it's actually stiffer than the right side. So he. Both of his hip, his hip flexors, psoas, are overactive. Now you're gonna see his left shoulder does not internally rotate. I'm just trying to position him so you can see it. His left shoulder does not internally rotate. And now his right shoulder also 
does not internally rotate. Okay, now I'm gonna now that the video speeds up. And there we go. So I'm just setting the camera up. So I'm just showing that I'm not changing and I'm not doing any tricks here. The camera stays on. I'm just putting him on a box and then I'll straighten out the camera. And I am teaching him how to blow up a balloon properly. So his and I've made videos on this, the best vagus nerve exercise. I talk about how to do this. Now I, now I round his back. I'm, a I'm putting him in flexion, one, one breath, one breath in the proper position. He can now adduct. His hip flexors are off on the right side. His hip flexors are off on the left side. His left shoulder now internally rotates, no problem. And his right shoulder also internally rotates with no problem. So there you go. That was one, I taught him how to blow up a balloon and make sure his tongue remained up against his, the roof of his mouth so to prevent the air from going back in. And then I put him in the proper position. And the moment he took one inhalation, what did I see? I saw, because remember, his back was like this. When I put him in a flexed position, it rounded his back. It gave his diaphragms, plural, a, a, a position that they could get into, which would retain a dome or would put the dome back into the diaphragm. We had to put that body into, from here, extension, into a state of flexion, which positioned his hip flexors to turn off as long as he could use his diaphragms. And with one breath in, I told him to stop after one breath. Why? Because I saw his back expand backwards. When you're extended, you cannot expand your back. So all, because all you're doing is pulling your rib cage up, up, up with your neck. And once I saw that, I knew immediately I stopped him after one breath and he was neutral. Now, he was a great test case because he had no pathology. Now, this is where it gets more complicated. That's why this technique I cannot say this technique will work for every single person. For some reason that makes people angry because they think there should be one exercise or one technique that works for every single person. That is not the case. He had no pathology. And what you're gonna see here, the two places where pathology or weakness or excessive range of motion, instability occur most frequently with individuals who are in this pattern, which is basically everybody that comes to see me, is in the front of the left hip. So in the front of the left hip, the anterior ligaments are usually stretched out. That's because of the position the pelvis and the femur have been in for so long has stretched out those ligaments so people lose stability in the front of the left hip. That's not, at least, I would say, not 85 to 90% of people who come to see me for pain have that front hip on the left that is unstable. Another area could be in the right iliolumbar area. So the, the area of the, the back of the right it's part of the pelvis that attaches to the, to the lower lumbar vertebrae, that can often be stretched out also. So if there's areas of instability, those two areas of instability, if, if he had those, I would, do not, I would not do that technique with him, probably. I would do the technique that I'm gonna show, uh, but also because that instability that's built in makes it more difficult to breathe without using the wrong muscles. When you're completely intact, when you're, when you're still structurally stable, but in a pattern, everything you respond to everything. These types of clients, patients, whatever you want to call them, they make us look like geniuses because as long as you put them in the right position and have them breathe, things will work. But people with instability, and most people, if you're in pain and you're watching this video, and even if you're not in pain and you're over the age of 18 or 19, or in your 20s, 30s, 40s and up, highly likely that at least your left hip will be unstable. And the more instability there is in that left side, because remember, you have less core muscle on the left side and the pattern puts us over on our right side. So we become very unstable on the left because we're never there appropriately. The more instability on that left hip, the more you have to tighten up in other areas of your body to stabilize you. But you have to get those areas to relax so you can stabilize the left hip. And that's where the science of postural restoration really comes in. If you're still with me and you like this video, could you please like it, comment, share, or subscribe to the channel? I would appreciate it, thanks. Okay, so here I am, set myself up. My back is against the wall. There's a towel between my thighs, and as I squeeze that towel, it helps. A lot of people who are in this forward position, they have a tightness in the back. So squeezing the towel will help 
bring the pelvis in the right position and also stretch anything in the back. You can also put a, just a, a normal ball between the knees and this is what it looks like from the side. I'm just in that position and I'm breathing and I'm, I'm sensing my back move back against the, the, the less movement you see, the better. All I'm sensing, because I don't need it really, but my, my, my pelvis is tilted back, my spine, my lower back is flat. And what you also see is the front of my chest is expanding forward as I take a breath in. So the, the, the upper chest expands forward, the middle back extends backwards, and that's overall expansion. What I'm not doing is this. That is neck breathing. If you take a breath in and your shoulders go up, that's not going to work. You, you're not, you, it's not going to work. And I'm also not arching my back when I take a breath in. Those are the two things that people will mess up with. As long as you stay in the position that I was showing, you might have to watch the video again. As long as you stay in that position and breathe, and you're going to sense the ground underneath your left heel and the right arch, uh, you will inhibit, most likely, again, some people will have neck issues where their neck is so tight that it won't let go and this may not work. And again, not every PRI technique is perfect for every single person. That's why you really need to see somebody in person and not just try to do it on your own because you don't know if you have pathology. You won't know unless someone tests you and there's no way for you to know unless someone does test you. And now this technique is pretty safe in the sense that you're fully supported. You're not doing any hip shifting. You're just breathing in that position. So even if you did have hip pathology, instability, or even in your lower back, or even if your neck's simply not gonna let go. And of course, in other areas of this channel, all 300 videos on this channel is really about this discipline of posture restoration. I talk about my own experiences with my visual system and my jaw and my teeth and even my hearing that wouldn't let this technique work for me because I was because of my nervous system was way too jacked up. But for someone who has their cranium is basically okay, uh, this technique should work if you do it correctly. Now, of course, there's no one to test you unless you can test yourself, but it's very difficult to test yourself. But again, that's why you would want to try to find a postural restoration provider to help. Uh, they are located in Nebraska. You can go to the PRI website, posturalrestorationinstitute.com, and there's a find a provider page. But again, if you can't find a provider, this type of technique would at least get you started to inhibit the overactivity. But then you actually have to learn how to go from side to side with the appropriate muscles. So when the gentleman yesterday was done, he felt a difference immediately because again, he had no pathology. Those types of people, they get better really, really fast. You could do one technique like you saw, one breath and he was neutral. His body relaxed and he could feel it. He knew immediately he felt different. Other people are in, are in different situations and you're gonna need more extensive, uh, a more extensive rebuild, so to speak. And I am the master of this because I was, that was me. I was the ultimate PRI patient because my brain couldn't sense anything because I was only using one eye, my jaw was shifted, uh, my neck was way over active, my brain didn't know where I was. And I got through it. So it can be done, but you need help. But this is a great first technique um, to, you're not really gonna feel, by the way, you're probably not gonna feel your hamstrings too much in this technique. You might feel your adductors, but you might feel your hamstrings. Right arch, left heel, you don't want necessarily the right heel with this. Uh, and you should feel some abdominal activity. And if you can hold that together while you breathe in and out, uh, inhale through your nose, exhale. Focus on getting all the air out so your ribs come down. Breathe in through your nose, exhale. Five breaths with a three to five second pause after each exhalation. That's standard in all PRI techniques. It's the same breathing into the nose, out through the mouth. That's not how you breathe in everyday life, just through PRI techniques. Uh, and you are trying to slow everything down, you're trying to sense everything, make it to a sensory experience. It is not a gym exercise. It is the exact opposite. Gym exercises create tension in your body to feel your muscles. Postural restoration techniques decrease tension in your body to take you from a sympathetic dominant state to a parasympathetic dominant state and learn how to feel your muscles in that state. Wholly different experience. Uh, so with that, I hope you enjoyed it. And... Um, yeah, until next time.